Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, wanted to do a video on probably my favorite fishing kayak on the market. The one I'm talking about here is the New Canoe Unlimited. So New Canoe came out with this kayak. I want to say they dropped the announcement. It was either February or March of 2021. And of course, this is when everything was going crazy in the outdoor really in the world with COVID. So um, New Canoe had some issues in the beginning. Uh, they had some molding issues uh, and then also just getting materials. So you got a lot of excitement and then didn't see a lot of these out there, but that kind of teased everybody a little bit and everybody wanted this kayak. So we're just now, uh, and we're one of the larger New Canoe dealers in the country, we're just now kind of getting these in on a regular basis just for stock. Um, but this one here, so this is a 2023 New Canoe Unlimited, and the color you see here is Tundra. So my personal kayak, um, I had a Tundra Unlimited for a little over a year. I ran the XI3 motor on it, which we'll get into all that here in a second. But this is as it comes from the factory. When you buy a New Canoe Unlimited, this is what you get. So everything on here is included. So the, the kayak itself weighs... 84 pounds that is fitted so that's with the seat everything on it uh the weight capacity on new canoe unlimited is the same as the frontier 12 which you see next to it here what they call a self bailing weight capacity is 450 pounds that is with the scupper plugs out the scupper plugs are included for all of them uh, with those in your weight capacity goes up to 650 pounds that is a usable weight capacity. That is not, has nothing to do with the boat weight, everything. It's a paddler plus gear. So I'll get into some of the features here. So you'll see here on the front, uh, you got that little comfort grip handle. That is not a fabric handle, but you know, I would be careful if, you know, for tying down, um, again, handles and tying, being able to tie use them as tie downs are really uh, something I focus a lot on because it's something a lot of people do if you're running it in the back of a truck. Uh, you do have those rod tip protectors kind of mounted onto the sides there. Your plate right here, that is an access plate. So those are removable. You can drill into them. You can use those to put your wiring through if you are running that bow mount. And they're replaceable, so that allows you to drill into the kayak underneath it. And then if you want to get rid of it or you want to switch up what you're doing, you can just buy the replacement plates and the gaskets, put it over there, and it's as good as new. You do have a really nice deck padding on the Unlimited here. Uh, that Again, I just I love this color personally. Uh, you can see there's a variety of different colors that new canoes come in. Uh, but this one here I've got on the floor in Tundra. I just, I've always loved this. So the biggest difference between the Unlimited and the Frontier 12 is kind of, obviously, uh, the Unlimited being six inches longer. And you've got a little bit more strategically placed gear track uh, in the middle on the gunnels here, which I, that was kind of a welcome addition to me. You can see there on the uh, the Frontier, you've got just the two gear track here. And you got two smaller gear track kind of mounted down into the kayak because the gunnels kind of raise up a little bit. That became an issue with people that just wanted to run some rod holders on there. Um, some of them were a little too short. Again, depending on what you want to do. If you're wanting to troll, you're going to want to get the Yak Attack Omega Pro versus just the standard Omega. But anyway, I'm kind of getting into the weeds there. Um, these here are really nice. These are where your tackle storage goes. These will fit up to, I believe, a 3600 series um, Plano box. You can see here too, um, the drainage on the unlimited. So you've got scupper holes kind of strategically mounted on the deck. You've also got these gunnels down here that kind of, if you get water across the front, it's meant to kind of drain and funnel that water into those scupper holes, which is really nice. You're not pooling up any water on the deck. As always, um, one of my favorite things about the new canoes is the swivel chair. That chair will trim the length of the kayak. Uh, you can also run your tandem on there like the uh, like the Frontier. So, and again, this is personally speaking, the most welcome change between the Frontier and the Unlimited, in my opinion, is that handle. 
So this handle is metal. It swivels, which is really nice. The Frontier 12 has got this T handle, and that was the one thing I didn't like about that boat. So it's got that T handle with the rope on it. What that does is when you're carrying it, and again, they're both kind of heavy kayaks. When you're carrying it like that, it creates that pendulum effect. It just kind of, it'll swing. And to me, it just, and this is just me personally, it kind of felt like the kayak was a little bit heavier than it actually was because of that. Um, in the back here, you've also got an access hatch. That's gives you access to the hole. Yeah, you can store small gear and stuff, but that's really intended for if you're running wiring or electronics, it gives you access to inside of it. You've also got the divots here if you want to run your through-hole wiring. So you get, that's where you get your plug-ins, where you plug in your battery or your trolling motor on the back here. Also, you've got that flat transom mount. They sell plates on there. Of course, Honda does a two and a half horse outboard motor like they do on the Frontier. You can do uh, the pedal drive system on new canoes where the pedal drive, you can add to it. So you don't have to buy a specialty kayak to have your pedal drive. You can start with the Unlimited or the Frontier and then you can kind of go up to a pedal drive or a trolling motor setup that's one of the things that drew me to new canoe personally was the fact that you can kind of, it can grow with you because your needs and your, your taste are going to change over time. You don't have to buy a new kayak to do that. You can run a pedal drive on it. You can run a trolling motor. You can run both of them on there. So you can really, the sky's kind of the limit with the customization on these new canoes. Uh, the side handles are hard handles versus these, uh, fabric flexible handles. They also double, both of them do, as paddle clip holders. So you, if you got a paddle, you can see that little recessed area in the in the side of the kayak here. Your paddle can fit in there and it locks in place really nicely. So it allows you to kind of put it to the side, it'll hold it, and it keeps it out of the deck. Because again, with a fishing kayak, you really want that space kind of clean because you're going to you're going to slime it up with fish. You're going to have gear in front of you. You're going to have tackle. Um, as it, as the longer your trip is, the more clutter you're going to find in front of you. Cause it's not, you know, once you're out there, you're all bets are off, <laughs> at least with me. Um, you've also got these side, uh, access plates here as well. So again, that lets you run your wiring through the hole for like maybe a fish finder, you know, something like that. And then also your scupper hole right here, they do sell a retractable scupper, uh, the re retractable transducer mount underneath it. And I'm going to show you the bottom of the kayak. So what makes, what makes this kayak different than most? Uh, what makes, you know, wh where's the differences in a wider, longer kayak versus another, you know, any other 12 foot kayak? So new canoe, I love this keel. That keel is sharp as a knife and that will help you cut water a lot easier. Cause again, don't get me wrong guys, you are paddling around a little bit of a battleship here. It does paddle a little bit better than the Frontier 12 in my opinion, but you can kind of see here, you've got, you know, you've got your, your channels here where your scupper holes are. You can see your transducer mount right there. That's, you know, that's, let me get a better look at that for you. So that's extremely deep and extremely long. That will be really good for those of you that want to run maybe those longer transducers. If you got side scan, like on your, um, your low rants, uh, reveal seven with the triple shot, it's got kind of that longer transducer, uh, you know, Maybe you want to run live scope eventually. Maybe you want to do something like that. You're going to be able to do that on this kayak. And also, it's kind of got this... Now, the way the scupper holes are on here, it really does kind of decrease on the drag. So you got kind of a sharp edge here. And then this, is a little, this sits a little bit lower, and it's kind of rounded. So it's gonna decrease that drag you get from all those scupper holes, which is kind of unique there as well. You can obviously see where your stability, you've got these flat planes here, but they're not so far downward, like maybe a Perception Outlaw or a Bonafide SS series. So that does help with your turning on the water 
because again, you're in a very large kayak. So you want any, you want any advantage you can get. Also, you can see you've got your lines here. This is where your secondary stability comes from. So you can lean it a little bit and it's still going to catch that. So your primary stability is what they call the initial wiggle. When you first get in there, how stable do you feel right off the bat? But when you get used to it, you're going to lean it a little bit. When you lean it and you get past this line here on the bottom, this is where your secondary stability stands. This is if you're leaning to bow to fish. It's also really, there's a huge advantage if you're turning that swivel seat. So again, if you're a bigger guy, you're turning that swivel seat and you got your legs kind of off the side, that secondary stability is going to be probably where you're at a little bit, especially when you're moving around. Also, if you're standing up, again, there, you're going to get a little bit of that wiggle there. That secondary stability is where that comes into play as well. So again, I don't, I try not to get too, too scientific on that, but it's, it definitely is worth talking about because those are, those are things you're asking yourself if you're looking at this kayak is how stable is it? Um, does that high seat position make me feel unstable? So guys, it's a 41 inch wide kayak. That's one of the wider kayaks on the market for that seating position. The kayak is designed to, for you to sit high like that. It's very, very stable. I'm not the best water balance guy, but I can stand up in the unlimited. So what, what's this kayak for? So this kayak is just like any of the new canoes, really. It's for the outdoor enthusiast in mind. The, uh, the, you're hunting, you're fishing. Uh, they sell duck blinds for these. They sell shotgun racks, fishing rod holders, transducer mounts, They're, the, the, there's really no, no option you can't do with the new canoe. And also, just like any of the new canoes, you get free parts for life. That's huge. Uh, you probably heard me talk about it on the other new canoe video I did where I just kind of kind of summarized over the whole lineup. That's, that's really big because when you're putting $1,700, $1,800 in a kayak just starting out, you want it to be quality, but you want to know that they're going to stand behind that if something ever, you know, ever breaks down on it. Um, so the new canoe unlimited, like I said, it is 41 inches wide. It is 12 foot, six inches long. The retail as of right now for 2023 is 1799 for the unlimited. It is a hundred dollars more than the frontier 12. And again, I, I know I talked about that a little bit on my other new canoe video. So what, who would go for the unlimited over the frontier 12 or vice versa? So in my opinion, the Frontier the Frontier 12 is someone that's maybe wanting to do a little bit more minimal, minimalist on it, but still wants that heavy weight capacity, maybe wants that front hatch. The Unlimited's a little bit easier for customizing with, say, a motor or a fish finder. Uh, and when I say fish finder, I mean kind of your higher end stuff, not just, you know, like maybe a Garmin Striker 4, because again, that's what I ran on my Frontier 12. But you've got a little bit more options on that. You can run the transducer underneath. You've got the uh, extra threaded insert here on the nose. So that is uh, the little bit better of an install on the plate where you've got the three bolts going in there. You can run the XI3 on both of them. It's just a little easier on this. You've also got the divots on the front as well. Maybe you can kind of see that right in there. So that's for your... Uh, New Canoe sells a plug-and-play kit. Also, your pedal drive. Again, your pedal drive will go on both of them. But I just I like the extra gear track. I like the uh, the paddling performance a little bit better. I do like the addition of the tackle storage in the side. That's a huge deal, um, especially if you just want to take a couple of Plano boxes with you. And then you've also got some additional gear track back here where you can run a tackle crate setup. You can run your battery box here. Uh, you got the access plates. You do have the flush mount rod holders. Is that worth the extra $100 over the Frontier 12? Well, that's for you to decide, really. I think it is. Um, they're both great boats, but they both kind of, they're, they're very, very similar, but they have some different purposes, in my opinion. So, again, you really got to ask where you want to go with it. So if you're if you're even remotely curious about motorizing your kayak eventually, the the unlimited's kind of where you want to go in my opinion. 
the unlimited to me is maybe a slightly upgraded frontier 12. But uh, anyways, guys, that's all I've got on the Unlimited. Again, I know that's been a popular boat, so I kind of wanted to get a video out there on my thoughts. Again, that's realistically, that is one of my favorite fishing platforms out there. Um, I've owned one personally. I've actually owned both of these kayaks, but the Unlimited is it, it, really all it's cracked up to be, in my opinion. Is it worth the $17.99? That's for you to decide, but I didn't hesitate on it. But uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you continue to enjoy these videos. If you have any questions on the Unlimited, if you have any experience on it, let me know in the comments. It can help somebody else out uh, that's maybe in the market for one, kind of make that decision, maybe answer some of their questions. Anyways, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching.